Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me again today. While I go back and work on my wedding painting from this past Saturday, I can't believe it's taken me this long to get back to it. Uh, I am not always in control of my own destiny. <laughs> Putting a little bit dramatically. <laughs> not in control of my day-to-day -day time. Uh, so here I am. Finally, 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 finally getting back to it. So, And let me tell you what I'm doing especially for those of you who perhaps don't follow me on a regular basis, I am doing what I call, and I have here on a stand here, is my backup telephone that is my camera uh, from which I do my painting, especially my wedding paintings. Uh, when I'm at a wedding, I take all my photographs on my backup phone because my regular phone, which is right here. Hello, Erlinda. Hi, nice to have you have you on board, fellow Texan. West Texas, even. Uh, so I am uh, looking at that, and uh, the, the fuzz layer, and, and you can probably hardly see what I'm doing here, and that's that's part of the <laughs> part of the nature of this, the fuzz layer. It's very translucent, various degrees of translucent even, sometimes more than others. Like that, what I just did right there is too much, so I don't get upset, but I do continue to paint. I keep my painting, in other words, when you use a rag, you keep your painting mind on. You don't switch over to <laughs> that self-condemning uh, and eraser. I call it the spirit of eraser. Don't let the spirit of eraser come on you. <laughs> Anytime you use a, anytime when you have to use a rag, no, no, no. You keep continue to think like a, an artist, think like a painter, and you're still interested in making good marks. Okay, so two things that I have to do with this painting, two very large things, uh, especially in this the fuzz layer. One is I I need to lighten the painting considerably, and again I'm looking at this photograph. I took a whole bunch of pictures of the backdrop. The, the background, the architecture, but it's this one right here that has uh, Caroline and Casey in it, where I get I'm getting the the color that I really want in this fire big stone fireplace, big rustic stone fireplace behind them. Um, so two things I need to do in this painting, and that is make it lighter overall, lighten many of the values, which is what, of course, what the fuzz layer is good for. So instead of having to go in and do it very meticulously, carefully, slowly, you know, with thick paint, I can just scumble in very quickly the uh, colors that I'm after. So number one, lighter. Number two, cooler. Not, I don't want it quite as uh, brown as it turned out the other night. And that this is partly from getting the painting home and then um, seeing it in other light, seeing it in another context and going, ooh, that's way too brown. And so fuzz layer to the rescue. I'm glad I'm glad I discovered this trick a couple years ago. In fact, I was watching uh, I was going through a number of my videos last week, um, putting them into playlists. I don't know if any of you have noticed that or not, but I now on my channel have um, 25 or 30 playlists that some of you might find interesting, uh, you might find helpful. Like for instance, one playlist is I think just the fuzz layer. Uh, another playlist is when I use the pencils. So if some of you, my students, if you want to zero right in on some of the particular stages or phases of the painting process, and you'd like to see me do, or the first acrylic layer, if you'd like to you know, just see me do that in several paintings, knock yourself out. Now you can do that. Anyway, so while I was doing that, I actually stumbled upon the video, the, the, the painting where I first stumbled upon 
this new technique for me, uh, the fuzz layer. So that was kind of fun. I didn't realize that I, I had been broadcasting or that I had it broadcasted, but I did. So you can actually, it's, I don't know what number it is, but it's uh, July of 2016, I believe. July, I'm sorry, July 4th, Jul the 4th of July, 2016. And anyway, it was kind of interesting to discover that I actually caught that, uh, that day of discovery, that moment of discovery, caught it on camera and uh, posted it. <laughs> that was kind of fun, fun to see. So here again, I am lightning. And it, again, I think you understand this, but it's, if you want to try to be influenced by my technique, I'm sorry, I had the camera wrong there. Uh, that this, it's important. This is all very translucent. Now, don't be confused. I'm assuming if I say three words, you can decipher their meanings. Transparent, translucent, opaque. So I am saying the middle of those, translucent, not transparent. Uh, so anyway, it's very important that that this fuzz layer is, I'm not losing information. That's a really important, a really important issue for me. I'm not covering up um, all the previous work. I'm, it's all showing through. I'm pushing it back a little bit, but you can still see it. Okay, so I've lightened up all of this a little bit. Now I think I think I can venture to lighten this part of the fireplace even a little more and I've I've applied cooler cooler uh, colors still browns but <clears throat> browns with more blue in it so it's not a is as much of an orange ish brown okay I think I can go straight from that into um, greenery now do I need much I don't need much green up here maybe a little bit of darkening but you don't darken with translucent you you get lighter down here on the other hand I can definitely use some lighter green stuff happening again I'm looking at my photograph I'm very anxious to get to work on the on the faces again, but uh, AT and T, our internet carrier, is sending a notice saying, "Sorry, you don't have any internet. We're working on it." Um, you may wonder why do I need internet to work on their faces? Uh, that's a long story because I took pictures, I made, and I want to print them out. That's why, and I can't I can't send the pictures from my phone. To my computer until we have internet. So that's the basic story. Yeah, so little, little more. They were very proud of the 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 wedding family. They were particularly intent that I capture some of this floral stuff, which of course I'm more than happy to do. The flowers were beautiful. So there's some of the greenery. Let's just do a little bit more, even greener than that, just a little bit. I've said recently that the this fuzz layer, I call it, I think for obvious reasons, has become even more important in my technique in recent months. Even more important than I than than it was when I first started out, especially for doing what exactly what I'm doing right here, which is shifting the painting toward um, a color palette, shifting the whole canvas quickly and easily in a in a in a direction of local color. I just realized I want to get some of that cool lighter gray on the stonework down here as well. It's all part of the stone fireplace. I 
So the advantage, the benefit of the, what I'm calling the fuzz layer is it's so quick. You can make, I've shifted the, the I've touched almost the entire canvas at this point and shifted it all in different directions and it's only taken me a very few minutes. That's a real, real benefit. Now, let's, let's zoom in before I leave you. I want to do some glow in the, the, these are windows. In the fireplace, it's a, big enough to walk through, and it's a two-sided fireplace, so we see light coming through the windows, through the fireplace. I want to do that, and of course, I want to do the bride's dress needs to be brightened up, of course, a significant amount. So let's, where should I start? I think I'll start with the windows. So I want to mix up a pale, warm, uh, and a little tiny bit cooler. Again, trying to shift my whole painting a little bit away from the, the too much warmth here. So let's, let's try to get that done. One of the characteristics of the fuzz layer is that it's very soft edges. This is what works for me, because you don't have to paint like me. But it's what's working for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's bad. That, that worked even better than I thought. <laughs> Making the light coming through the windows uh, less yellow-orange. And of course, another name I use for the fuzz layer is the glow layer. So anything, anything like right now, the windows are, of course, glowing. And um, so I'm, it's very, very important, whether you paint like me or not, <laughs> very important that anything that's glowing, if you want in your painting, that if anything you want to look as though it is glowing, you give it very soft edges. How soft? Very soft. Like in a painting this size, we're talking like a two or three inch spread. Like the light from these windows can go beyond the windows a couple inches. Isn't that nice? Already, just that little bit. Now let's continue with uh, these classic lamps. Up here again. There. Okay. Now let me get to warm this up just a little bit. Let's do, let's focus on the bride's dress. And I have the photograph that I was working from. Here it is, right here. That's where I got. Right, their, their faces and their bodies. Nice. I didn't have to do any tricky manipulation this past Saturday to get uh, to get their their photographs usable. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Um, I'm still getting used to the, the reality that I can actually color that far outside the lines and it's going to look good. And it is going to look good. But you understand? That's her dress. And I see a stroke that I just put down that goes a good three or four, three and a half inches outside of her dress. How can that be good? Well, if you stay tuned and watch me finish this painting, you will see how, in fact, how good that is. Now, I will confess that, that uh, part of the reason that the, the fuzz layer is particularly useful to me is because my native disposition, my native inclination, my most favorite mistake <laughs> in painting is to make too many hard edges. 
Now, I'm not everybody's like me, but I happen to know that yeah, most people are like me. Most people, that's why you call being too tight, right? Most of us who are painting, we're saying, I'm tight and I want to get looser. Well, that definitely applies to me. And uh, this, this, adding this step as a distinct step of the painting process has really helped my painting a good deal. And by the way, doing it with two hands is a huge, huge benefit and advantage. Because if I were to do this with one hand, um, I would have a hard time cutting loose, so to speak. I'd have a hard time forcing one hand to do uh, what, what I'm asking them to do. But because I'm using two hands, my brain doesn't have time to think about it and get scared. <laughs> get it? Now, and again, I, I hope you'll... Hi, Erlinda, you're exactly right. So right now, this dress is a ridiculous fuzz. The issue, the point is, when I come back and do the final edit and I throw in just a few hard edges here and there and here and there, all of a sudden, all this fuzz, and of course, I can any of it that I don't like, I can wipe it off if I decide it's too much. I probably won't. Um, well, let me, let me jump ahead right now. Let, let, let's go ahead to uh, the final edit just for a minute, even though... I'm jumping ahead of the process. When I come in here now and do a hard edge, and hard is, of course, a relative term, <laughs> a harder edge right there, all of a sudden now our eyes see that clearly as the edge of the dress. And all this out here almost disappears. Um, mentally, psychologically, visually, it almost disappears. We see it not as part of the dress. So it switches from, you know, right now the dress is like a ghost. It just goes out in all directions. It switches from that in the final edit when I come back and do some, some hard edges. Now, boom, we know exactly where the dress ends and everything out here is glow and it looks good. Okay, now I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, continue i'm going to i'm going to go let's go back to the fuzz layer now Just at least one more thing that i want to fuzz up <laughs> before artists we're always making up words aren't we or is it just me anyway i want to fuzz up the uh the flowers down here in other words there's a bunch of uh warm yellow peach salmon coral to red flowers not red not and i'm trying to i'm telling you the uh the the color palette of the the the, the entire wedding the the bride's bouquet and so on and so forth so um rather than again rather than wait until the final layer to get these flower colors nailed down um, I can do it so much more quickly, as you can see, because it just takes a quick swish to indicate a color. Now, let me, let me shift that around, then add some yellow to that. So I've got more like a peach color on my brushes now. And again, so right now, the, all the flowers that I'm doing are extremely fuzzy and look don't look a whole lot like flowers because they're too fuzzy. But when I come in and just do a few hard edges, and I won't need to touch every flower at all. There'll be several of these uh, smudgy <laughs> flower shapes that won't need any hard edges at all. I'll just need to come in and do a few of them. Um, let me add some light to that. Okay, I feel like now probably I, my painting is much closer to the the color palette that that my client was looking for. Now, I'm going to take a break here in a minute, but before I go, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do next because I'm not sure that I'm going to broadcast my, my next step. After doing all of this fuzz, um, I've lost an awful lot of my pencil. Not all of it, but here and there. And I don't 
I don't have to do pencil, of course. That's is not required. <laughs> the, the pencil police are not going to come over and say, hey, we need a little more pencil. No, 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 nothing like that. But just my own personal taste. I like the way the pencil, the pencil looks and feels. And so I'm going to uh, do, after all this fuzz, I'm going to come back and do just a little bit more pencil and then theoretically anyway then go directly to the final layer okay i hope that was fun and in hello friends welcome back i am uh, basically done with the fuzz layer then i spent several minutes um doing some pencil, which you guys can probably barely or, or not even see. Uh, then I did um, some dark areas, like I had to reinforce the shadow underneath this mantelpiece and, and punch some dark green in these flowers, her bouquet and that. So, and then just a little bit of details in the figures back there. So that's, that's what I've done. I'm doing just, again, just a little bit more. Um, let me find the bride again over here. Just a little bit more pencil, and then I'm going to wrap up this episode and move on to the, the final edit layer, which consists primarily of light, opaque highlights. That makes sense? Opaque. Of course, light and opaque, those are like synonymous terms. I don't really have to say both of those words, but just make it clear. Light and opaque and highlights. So just, just sparkle here and there. Uh, a little bit more pencil following up the, the fuzz layer. I'm very much, I was a little bit worried about this painting to tell you the truth. After I got it home and saw it in a more natural, like living room light, it was too dark. But I'm, I'm quite happy with it now. Um, the bride and groom, of course, their faces are just supposed to, to glow and come forward, and that's working very well. So I'm done, ready to go to the last layer.